It's in the Bible. Read it. But let me qualify it. Let me go deeper so that some men will not. He didn't say don't give your strength to your wife. He said woman. So there is a grace that come upon a man that marry. He can even have sex ten times a day. Grace backs you to do things that you don't get the effect or negative effect of it. But when you sleep with a woman that is not your wife, Bible says you are throwing strength away. So actually, those of you who are still living in fornication, or oh, some of you have lost. Let me check the strength you lost. If at the last one you did, you have lost about 10 years strength. It's gone. I call, catch your I say, well, have you seen that? Touch a man's whether his heart is beating. Touch a man's heart. Is, if he's making pam, 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 it means that the guy is suffering. It's gone. In fact, there are some people, they're supposed to die 6 o'clock in the evening. By, by morning, 6 o'clock, they are dead. Because between 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., the strength is in a woman. It's gone. That is why Solomon, if you check the king, he died very early. Yeah. Even David cried, he died at 70. You can live like women. And when I started preaching hidden curse, I will show you where it's coming from. It's a curse. It started with a guy called Judah. He slept with his daughter-in-law. Even delayed the kingdom for 10 years. That is why when we read, when we read Genesis chapter 49 from verse number 5, if you read from verse 1, Genesis 49 verse, five, verse 1, it is where Jacob used his mouth to prophetically define the future of the 12 tribes. So look at it. And Jacob called unto his sons. Give me the New Living Translation, if you don't mind. Huh? Jacob called unto his sons. Watch this very carefully. Then Jacob called together all his sons and said, Gather around me, and I will tell you what will happen to each of you in the days to come. So it means that from now, I'm going to use my mouth to define your future. That means that whatever I say, that is how your life will go. This is one of the most dangerous scriptures in the Bible. It means that you don't have your life. Whatever you are living your life, my mouth is going to define it. Then he called Ruby. He cursed him. First one. Come and listen. You sons of Jacob, listen to Israel, your father. Watch this. Ruby, you are the firstborn. My strength, the child of my vigorous youth. You are first, you are first in ranking and first in power. Jump to King James. Jump to King James. John to Kim James, my dear. Thank you so much. Ruby, thou art my firstborn, my might and the beginning of my strength, the excellence of dignity and the excellence of power. But, but, unstable as water, but, Ruby, unstable as water, thou shalt not excel. So he told Ruby that you will not make it. In fact, the New Living Translation says, I'm taking you out from the position of firstborn. So look at the New Living Translation. He, dis, he, he, he cut him off. The new living. But you are as unruly as flood. You will be firstborn no longer. Now when you go to the Bible and check the effect of this case, the tribe of Ruby is the only tribe that couldn't cross the river to the promised land. When a curse is operating, you make a decision and you don't know it's under the influence of a curse. God said, all of you should cross. They said that we like this side of the Jordan. We want to worship here. But if, 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 if God said don't stay there, then by the mouth of the Lord, the land cannot be fertile. Wait, don't clap. There is nothing in Israel that make it look like it's a land that flow with milk and honey. It's rocks. It's a desert. But it's becoming fruitful because of what God said. So actually, the problem is not your location. It's what God has told you. Yes. When God speaks, even a desert will become a fruitful field. Yes. If I'm in Ghana, they will shout a louder amen. Watch this. Come back to King James. So he move him out. Now, there is another deeper thing. Let's go on here. Let's go. Let's, 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 let's analyze the reason for this. This guy that he cares, his mother is called Leah. 
Now, because I have a lot of doctors here, love, so let me stand in front of you and tell you. Don't marry a man who doesn't love you. I'm coming back to tell you again. Don't think when you give him sex, he will love you. The reason is this. If a man doesn't love you, he will never love your children. I'm painting biblical pictures to you. The woman called Leah, actually, Jacob wedded Rachel twice. He never wed Leah. First wedding, I declare you, I pronounce you husband and wife. Then the Akpa man. Akpa, may you not have a father-in-law like Laban. Laban went to electricity in Ghana and said, put the light off. And they put the light, doom so happy. Then he carried Leah instead of Rachel. I went to put her by the side of Jacob. And because it was light off. And because Jacob too was charged. Hey, hey, Think about it. You pretend you are holy. Don't worry, I'm preaching. <laughs> pretend you are holier than me. She, she slept with Leah. And you see that he's cursing Leah's firstborn. He has not finished you. The woman he loved, when the day he delivered, he saw a coat of many colors and gave it to the boy. Rachel's firstborn is called Joseph. He gave me a coat of many colors. When he cursed Ruby, he moved Ruby aside. Look at what he did. He's a dangerous prophet. She knew what he was doing. He cursed Ruby. God took Levite. So two tribes are missing now. Because the Levite has no inheritance. They can't even get a land. They have to serve in the temple. Because they have to guide the other tribes to serve God. Reuben is cursed. Levite, even Levite, I'm going to show you that he also cursed Levite. So God in his mercy took Levite. Then he replaced the two of them with Manasseh and Ephraim. And because of the prophetic authority, God has to accept it. Be careful. When we are dealing with people with authority. Hey, I'll give him sex. After that, you love me. You, you, are, you are going to put your children into trouble. Now, let's, let's go. Go to King James. Unstable as water, you will not ascend. And the reason also is that he went to sleep with his father's concubine. Let's go to the next verse. Watch this. Let's see the next children there. Simon and Levi. Watch this. Our brethren, instrument of cruelty in their habitation. Look at what is. These are the, the next two children that followed Ruby. Oh, my soul, come not down unto their secret, unto the assembly. My, my honor, be not thou united, for in their anger they slew a man. So there was a curse in the tribe of Levi called anger. And the anger is where Moses was coming from. It is what stopped him from entering the promised land. So I'm going to show you what I call hidden curses. When you don't know it, you're anointing notwithstanding. This is where Moses is coming from. Leave on. Say, in your anger, you slew a man. And in their self way, they dig down a well. Watch this. Now look at the curse. Curse be their anger. So you pronounce a curse on the anger of liver that affected Moses. That prevented him from going to speak to a rock, he strike it. Moses was so angry, man, that when you see two people fight, instead of separating them, he kill one. <laughs> anyway, we'll talk about that. Huh? For it was fierce and they are rough, for it was cruel. I would divide them in Jacob and scatter them in Israel. So these are all things. These are the tribe of Levite. That is why pastors cannot unite. Because we are all Levites. 
So if you don't deal with the curse, you will see that the curse will scatter you. Now let's keep going. <laughs> now look at this guy, Judah. Watch this. Thou art whom the brethren shall praise. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thy enemies. That is why David killed Goliath. And they were warriors. Thy father's children shall bow down before you. So he's bringing them to the place of kingship. Because that time he can only bow to kings. Now then he started with authority. So he said that huh? Judah is a lion's whip from the prey. My son, thou art gone up. He stooped down and he caught as a lion. And as an old lion, who shall rouse him up? Now he's going to give him the kingship authority. The scepter shall not depart from you. Come to New Living Translation, you understand. So she used his mouth to say that one day when you need a king, it must come from Judah. So just Jacob foresaw that one day Israel will need a king. Because God doesn't believe in democracy. Democracy is not in the Bible. What's in the Bible is called monarchy or theocracy. Theocracy is the rule of God. But monarchy is God's rule. So you see that God chooses kings. And kings, you don't vote. You don't vote them into power. It's God that chooses them. The scepter will not depart from Judah, nor the ruler's star from his descendant, until the coming of the one to whom it belongs. That is Jesus Christ. So they have to be rulers key until Jesus comes. And one whom all nations will honor. So Jacob gave the kingship huh, into Judah. But there was a condition. Because don't forget I told you yesterday that there cannot be authentic obedience without opportunity for disobedience. So we cannot say because you have become king, you wake up, you become king. There's a condition. Hmm? Deuteronomy chapter 23 verse 2. Look at the condition of you becoming a king. If you are made to become a king, this condition comes. A person, huh? okay, whichever one is, a bastard shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord. Even to his what? Ten generations shall he not enter. Come back to the one you gave me first. The New Living Translation. And let me show them something. Everybody say bastard. If a person is illegitimate by birth, neither he or his descendant for ten generations may be admitted to the assembly of the Lord. That means that if you are made to become a king mm. and you have sex with your daughter, mm. sex with your son's daughter, mm. the child is illegitimate. That's right. And by that, you are disqualified to be a king until 10 generations rule. Yeah. Wow. I'm waiting for you to clap better and then I will continue. Mm. If you are sitting by somebody who is not clapping, wake up and change your seat before we continue. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, be careful. Now, this Judah guy, when he received the prophecy, he has three sons. They marry a lady called Tamar. And you know the story. And the Tama girl dressed like a prostitute That's right. went to stand by the roadside. Yeah. The question is, how did he know that he can get his father-in-law? The thing work. Judas saw Tama and slept with her because Tama knows his father-in-law. And then, in the moment Judah, and you see, the first fruit of the prophecy if the thing happened to Judah's son, God would have considered. But he got a prophecy with a condition and went to commit sin. So the moment Judah slept with Tamar, then he has denied ten generations from being a king. So when God was choosing a king, instead of going to Judah, he went to Benjamin. And when you look at the scripture, Benjamin will not receive the prophecy to become kings. Saul is from the tribe of Benjamin. Mm -hmm. right. I have preached this thing from Bedin Power. I have shown people. Yeah. And watch this. I preach it in different sides. When you go to the book of Ruth, 
In the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word is established. Do you remember the lady called Ruth? God even gave him, gave her a book. I was surprised she was able to get a book. Tell your neighbor, Ruth got. He had a book. Huh? Um, what has happened to my Bible? Okay. The book of Ruth. It is somewhere I'm looking for the book of Ruth. Okay. Chapter 4. Let's read from verse number 18. Ruth chapter 4 verse 18. Give me the new King James Version. Huh? When Judah slept with Tamar, fortunately or unfortunately, the woman became pregnant and birthed twins. So Judah actually slept with a woman that his sons has also slept with. But you see, it was no intention like he met her. It was a trap. But he still didn't escape. It means that in the spirit realm, ignorance is not an excuse. Yes. Slap your shoulder by the shoulder, by the shoulder and say, be careful, be careful, be careful. I don't know that's not me you will be allowed to go free. It's there. Now let me show you something about cases. They are not anywhere. They are there. You just go and put your head inside. So God said, in the day you eat the fruit, you will surely die. As long as you have not ate it, you will know the effect of a curse until you touch the fruit. So if you read your background, and Switzerland, you don't even have background, so you don't, all places cemented. But if you go back and read your background, and you plan to plant maybe maize, if you leave the land, you see that some weeds you didn't plant to naturally grow out of the land. That is what is called curses. So, Cassie said, you don't need to invite them. They will be coming. You just have to make sure you build the defense against them. Watch this. Now, these are the generations of Perez. Huh? So, if you look at where Judas slept with Tamar, huh? go to verse number 17. Let me see whether you mentioned Judas' name there. I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure. Checking it, but I'll give it to you. Also, um, the neighbor woman gave him a name saying, There is a son born to Naomi, and they call his name Obed. And his father, <laughs> the father of what? Jesse. Jesse, and the father of what? David. We'll come to that, but come to verse 18. Huh? Now, these are the, gen gen genealogy, the, the genealogy of Perez. Perez begat what? Wait, you don't even come. Go to verse 18. 19. Hezron begat Ram. Ram begat Aminadad. Watch this. Check the names. Aminadad begat Nason. Nason begat Simon. Keep checking. Simon begat Boaz. Boaz begat Obed. But come to Matthew chapter 1 verse 3. I want you to see the name Judah there. Matthew chapter 1 verse 3. Judah slept with Tamar and gave birth to who? So Judah begat Perez. One. Huh? Have you noticed it? Perez begat Hezron. Hezron begat Ram. Keep going. Ram begat Aminadad. Aminadad begat Samuel. Aminadad begat Nashon. It's five. Eh? Nashon begat Samuel. Simon begat Boaz. Are you familiar with this name? Yes. By who? You also notice that there are strange women in this genealogy. Is it seven? Yes. Huh? Yes, now some begat Boaz. It's seven, eh? Yes, Boaz begat Obed. Yes. Obed begat Jesse. Yes. Wait. Keep going. Keep going. Jesus Christ. And Jesse begat David. Wait. David begat. Jesse begat David what? Everybody say the king. Everybody say the king. How many did we count it? Come back to Ruth chapter 4. The one we left first. 
Let's qualify it. Ruth chapter 4. Don't forget the 10. Huh? Now, 18. But computer, Who is that? Now, these are the genealogy. Pharaoh begat Hezron. Huh? Are you sure? It should be two. Judah begat Pharaoh. So this is one. Pharaoh begat Hezron. Two. Huh? Because Judah is the one who fired. Hezron is two. Hezron begat Ram. Ram begat Aminada. Keep going. Aminada begat Nashon. Nashon begat Simon. Simon begat Boaz. Boaz begat Obed. Obed begat Jesse. Jesse begat David. In the mouth of two witnesses. Come back to Matthew. So, what do you mean by what you said? A pastor shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord to a tenth generation. So, God waited for ten generations to rule. David was lucky that when the curse was expiring, it landed on him. Now, first Samuel chapter 10. So even Saul, God couldn't call him a king. Wait, let me show you something. Because if God called him a king and anointed him with horn, then he has shaped the kingdom completely. Look at Saul, first Samuel chapter 10. Then Samuel took King James. King James. This one, they will run the commentary. I need a King James version. I want to show you. Samuel took the vial of oil. This word in the Hebrew means tempera. Samuel took the vial of oil and poured it upon his head and kissed him and said, Is it not because the Lord has anointed me to be not a king? So you see, Saul was fighting, trying to give the kingdom to Jonathan. But captains can transfer inheritance. Come to Matthew chapter 1 and go to verse number 5. See something here. Huh? And boys, we got this and that. Go to the next verse. <laughs> huh? Go to the next verse, please. Jesus Christ. And Jesse because David. The king. David what? The king. David what? The king. David what? The king. First Samuel chapter 16 verse 10. That is the place where the thing took place. First Samuel chapter 16 verse 10. Again, Jesse made seven of his sons pass before them. And none of them was chosen. Go to verse number 11. Keep going. Verse 11. And Samuel says, is that all your son? And he said, no, there's one in the bush. Keep going. Keep going. Go to verse 12. And he sent and brought him. And he was ruddy and without a beautiful countenance. And God did to look and the Lord said, anoint him. Wait. This is he. So God spoke to Samuel. Now look at the next thing that happened. Then Samuel took what was used to anoint Saul. What was used to anoint David. This word means permanent. I've always been preaching good. <laughs> By the grace of God. <laughs> it's you that don't listen, but I've been preaching. I don't even think I'm preaching. I'm teaching the word. Sometimes I just have grace to teach. Amen. So you see, some of the fornication you are committing. If you study the Bible carefully, you will notice that all the women you meet, they are all altars. Every woman you meet is an altar. For instance, Mary is an altar that carries Messiah. So you don't break her virginity. Have you seen you are quiet? I don't want to go to that dimension because you fly. Look at the man and say, get a metal underwear. Tell the man, get a metal underwear. 
I didn't say love. Look at a man, whether your husband, this opportunity can be said, buddy, get a meter and put a padlock on it. And tell them, may the Lord have mercy on you. 